BoxingBoys.com live here with Andy Ruiz Jr. Andy, how are you? How's New York treating you? It's treating me really good, man. It's fantastic out here. All the big buildings, all the lights. Feels good. I'm blessed to be here. So I want to get into some of your headlines because I feel like you've been able to fill that void that Gerald Miller left out there. You know, when Gerald Miller took this fight, he was a big talker and people were excited for that because he was going to push the envelope. But you seem to be talking a lot in your headlines. The most recent one and the most intriguing one I read is that you've been watching Mike Tyson footage. Any truth to that? And if so, let us know a little bit about it. You know what? I'm not, I'm not the typical talker like everyone else. You know, I do my talking inside of the ring. Um, I have respect for all fighters that jump inside of the ring because we're out there risking our lives. Not just me and um, AJ, but everyone else, especially in the heavyweight division where, you know, some big punches um, going in your face and your head. But, you know, we're, we're mentally prepared for this fight and we're ready for all causes that happens and we're here to win. So, any truth to you watching any Mike Tyson footage? Of course, you know, Mike Tyson's been um, one of the biggest motivations of, of my life and my career, you know. Um, I'm a short guy, I'm fast, explosive, like him, so um, luckily he comes to Madison Square Garden and he sees uh, uh, history in the makings. So what is it about Mike that you are trying to adapt to your game? Is it the lateral movement, side to side, trying to cut the distance, get in uh, underneath AJ's jab? Or is it the explosive nature that you and him already bring? I, of course, you know, moving the head movement, throwing our combinations, um, not giving them that distance that everyone else does, you know. Um, Joshua hasn't fought nobody like me. Yeah, everybody's underestimating me just because of my weight. Um, but once you get in the ring with me, it's a whole different ball game. I think that the speed's gonna get to him, and you know it's gonna be an exciting fight. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy or anything like that. It's gonna be hard. I was gonna be sweating tears in there, but you know we're here. We're here to win. So, what sort of advantage do you think you have coming into this fight, being as though that you got Manuel Robles as your trainer? You've been training with him for two years now, and he's been on the other side of the corner from Anthony Joshua with Dominic Brazil. He obviously told me you and Dominic are nothing alike, but is there an advantage to having a guy that's already faced Joshua? Um, yeah, of course, you know. Uh, um, so the fighter that I am, you know, is different. Having having someone on you all the time, throwing the combinations, moving around. It's kind of hard fighting. When you're tall, it's kind of hard fighting smaller guys that move around, that, that bob and weave. But, um, you know, luckily that Manny Robles uh, knows uh, some of the things that Anthony Joshua does and his flaws and, and that, um, you know, it's good. Have you watched the Carlos Tackham fight, Alexander Povetkin fight, all Dillian White fight? All of them, all of them. What do you think are the similarities in those three? Um, everybody's fighting them at as a distance, you know. As a, they're giving him too much reach where Anthony's comfortable. I'm here to make him uncomfortable. I'm here to get him, get him out of his comfort zone. And you know, there's respect here um, outside of the ring, but inside of the ring, there's no respect. And I'm doing all. I'm gonna do all I can to to pull up, put that upset. Can you be able to keep up that Mexican style pressure for 12 rounds? I sure can. You know, coming out of two training camps you know the conditions here i'm loose i feel good i just fought three and a half weeks ago four weeks ago he hasn't fought 10 10 months i think so September. Then, um but you know what um i feel ready you know i feel good and anything could happen inside the ring but you sound super confident man like what I is it what, what are you feeling give a bring us into your head because you know I, everything i'm reading and just listening to you now you feel like you know something we don't know well, you guys don't know, and all the doubters that don't know, you know, this is going to be an exciting fight. Everybody thinks that he's going to beat me right away, you know, he's going to knock me down, boom, like how Wilder did to Brazil. to Brazil. But no, the real people that know boxing and they know what I could do, they know my ability, they, they, they know that I could win this fight, you know. There's a big chance of me winning the fight. As long as you believe in yourself and you have confidence, everything is going to go in your way, especially if you believe in God. So I've seen you, obviously, with Robles throwing that left hook. My similarity, and I hope that you have, would have seen it in those three fights, is that they've all been able to land that left hook on AJ. Pavekin, Dillian White, and obviously Carlos Tackham. Tackham was almost was able good. to go the distance. You know, it was mm -hmm. a kind of shaky stoppage. Joseph went the distance. Do you see yourself stopping AJ, or do you think that you would win by unanimous decision? You know what? It could go either way, man. I don't want to 
jinx myself and be like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna knock him down, this and that. And then it doesn't happen, so I kind of stay away from that. As long as we stick to the game plan and do what we gotta do, and you know, I know inside that we worked really hard for this fight. Like I said, we just came back from a training camp, going to this training camp, so the kids, the conditioning's there, the mentality's there, and you know, I'm here to shock the world and prove all the doubters wrong. So people are calling this a late minute replacement. Placement. Do you feel that it's not because you were coming straight off of a, a training camp and a fight? Do you feel like, you know, it's it's all right? It's normal for you? Yeah, I feel it's normal. You know, I just got done from one fight. I didn't get beat up or nothing. You know, we won good. We won in the fifth round, and now we moved on to the next, and we started a new training camp. And I feel I have the upper advantage since you know since I've been training all this time and. I'm ready. Now, how much, how, how important do you think that fight with Alexander Dimitrenko was for this fight, at least in preparation, right, because of his height? You know what, it was really good. Like I said, this is the reason why I'm confident because I feel this was meant to happen. And um, I'm here to make history, you know, and I'm built for this shit. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for Alexander, you know, it was good fighting him because he had, I feel he's a little taller than, than, AJ. than AJ, you know, but, I learned a lot from that fight, um, but everybody that knows boxing, they know what I could do, they know what I'm gonna do, and that's make history. So, is there a rematch clause if you do upset him? There is a rematch clause, and I'll be fighting over there in his hometown, oh. and I don't mind, you know, as long as we, we get that victory, we put the upset, um, I'm willing to, to fight anywhere. And I'm, I mean, I'm obviously a nosy person, I'm a reporter, but I'm only asking this because this was an issue with the Dillian White rematch clause and with the uh, Deontay Wilder rematch clause was that if they beat AJ, it's still 50-50 on the rematch or even a less split for the winner. Were you able to negotiate something that you were comfortable with is what I'll ask. Yeah, uh, for the rematch, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. Um, I feel we, we gotta win. Um, so so we could get that big number, you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know, our negotiations are, are there, especially for this fight, and I'm, I'm ready for June 1st. Now, if you were able to pull that upset, would there be any added pressure to do it again in the United Kingdom, or do you think that all the weight will be lifted off your shoulders because you've already lifted the belts off of the champion? Yeah, I think, I think um, I'll feel already good, you know, since I already won. But, of course, I'll give them the rematch, and and give the other um, heavyweights opportunities as well, you know. There's a lot of there's a lot of heavyweights out there that are trying to get this opportunity. Thanks to God that He gave me this opportunity, and I'm here now for the second time. So I'm I'm happy, man. Being as though that you're here for the second time, what do you think you're gonna do differently mentally? Being as though the first one, a lot of people thought you won. Other people thought Joseph Parker won, so I know that has to eat at you in the back of your mind. Does that make you train harder for this next title shot, or it's not about training hard? Of course, it's about training hard, stay focused, the discipline, and um, a lot of people don't know I trained myself for that fight. Um, when I was over there with Abel Sanchez, um, he was busy, you know, he was a busy man. I learned a lot from that guy. Um, nothing bad to say about him, but he was just busy when for the biggest fight of my career. And um, I trained myself for that fight, and I thought I did pretty good, but now that, I, that I'm with Manny Robles and, and I have my whole team um, around me, it, it's a lot better now. What are some of the differences that you notice? The, the, the nutritionist, the, 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 um, the speed, the movement, um, and the warrior, you know, that, that, that I have inside me. You know, I'm this chubby kid coming from, from a small town where everybody knows everybody, coming from these big lights, you know, it, it's a blessing. You know, I spoke to Joe Gallagher and that's what he questioned. He said, Joshua's been in front of 80,000 people, 70,000 people, the lights aren't gonna burn him. Is Ruiz gonna be able to be under those lights in front of 20,000? Have What's the capacity that you fought under and how is that gonna be different for you? You know, well, when I fought over there with, with Joseph Parker, everybody was against me. You know, I went to his hometown 
So it's kind of it's kind of like that, you know. But once I'm in the ring, it's like a tunnel vision that you go in there. You know, you don't really pay attention to all the lights, the the people around you, or the screaming. The main thing that your focus is on on your goal and and sticking to the game plan. Well, Andy, man, I want to thank you, and I want to wish you the best of luck thank on you, Saturday man. night, brother. That. I wish you uh, the best. If you have any social media you want to give out at this time, please do so. Yeah. Um, and thanks. Thank you, man. Look me up on Andy underscore Destroyer 13. On Instagram, you can see everything that I'm doing um, before the fight and after the fight. Look me up, baby. The biggest upset in, in history. All right. And the Bruins. Thank, you, Thank man. you. Appreciate that. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon.com. Backslash the Boxing Voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, Entitled, Betting Shows. The list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.